so uh, good morning guys uh, today i would like to present my presentation uh, upon machine learning i have made a small project using machine learning algorithms so my topic is gender recognition by speech analysis using machine learning and i made this under supervision of my teacher miss dp sharava ma'am uh, who is assistant professor at computer science and engineering amit university haryana so let's uh, start see gender recognition is a technique which is often utilized to determine the gender category by process of speech signals speech signals taken from recorded speech can be used to acquire acoustic attributes such as interquartile range frequency etc so in simple language what i have done is i have taken the data of a speech and uh, those are just acoustic signals by acoustics i mean that those signals Do, don't just contain one specific frequency, but a spectrum of fre uh, frequencies recorded by someone speaking, and uh, and then someone listening. So here you can see a, a small prototype of the whole uh, procedure. The speakers are speaking, and then uh, the pitch is uh, recognized by the system, and the model is trained, and it is passed through the classifier. So let's move on. So here's the problem statement. what I, what i am doing is i am classifying a person's gender based on based upon his or her acoustic properties of voice and over here i have used machine learning classification techniques and uh, which are really uh, feasible on these type of problem statements the learning used over here is supervised as we all know that uh, what is actual output and we can compare with the predictions and so here you can see uh, how it works the voice data is passed to the classifiers and then they decide whether the person is male or female uh, furthermore uh, uh, i am telling you the techniques or technologies used i have used libraries uh, such as data science libraries such as pandas matplotlib seaborn uh, and numpy basically seaborn is used to 3d for 3d visualization pandas is used to for data processing matplotlib is used for visualization as well and numpy is used to uh, process on arrays Machine learning libraries I've used Scikit-learn, uh, and which have many subordinate models, uh, many classification models, and model selection, matrix, etc. And uh, I've all I've implemented this all in Jupyter Notebook, and uh, the data which I am working on was available on Kaggle, so it's a website where free data is available. The data set used so I have used three thousand uh, across three thousand recorded voice samples collected from male and female speakers. The voice samples were pre-processed by acoustic analysis in R using the C-Wave and T-Wave packages, and the frequency range was 0 hertz to 280 hertz, which is the normal human vocal range. Vocal range. The above acoustic analysis was done by source itself, and uh, I do not have to do anything on that. So yeah, let's start machine learning. So the first thing is data data set attributes. Uh, over here there are 21 attributes. Let's start. Uh, the first is mean frequency, which is in kilohertz. Then uh, standard deviation of frequency in median, the median frequency. Then Q25, which is the first quanti quartile. Uh, it is the median of the first upper set or uh, upper part of the set, and the third quartile, which is the uh, which is the median of the second uh, with lower part of the set, and IQR, interquartile range, which is the difference between the Q3 and Q1. Then skewness. Basically, by skewness, I mean the symmetry of the uh, spectral uh, which I have formed of the audio. Uh, then kurtosis. The kurtosis uh, is the sharpness of the frequencies. Then spectral entropy, which tells about the energy of the frequencies. Then spectral flatness. Then mode frequency, frequency centroid. Then average of fundamental frequency. By fundamental frequency, I mean the resonant frequency of the signals. Then minimum fundamental frequency. Then maximum. Then average of dominant frequency. By, damp, by 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 dominant frequency, I mean uh, the frequency which has the most energy that that that, is, that has the most most power. Then minimum of uh, dominant frequency, then max dominant frequency, then DF range, then modulation index, and uh, at last the label which is the female or male person the genders the, the gender. Uh, See now I'm reading the data. Oh, uh, here I've uh, uh, put up the uh, a small screenshot of the implementation. I'm reading the data, and it contains 21 columns. 
and uh, three one six eight rows. All the I've mentioned attributes relevant ones, and they were found clean upon checking. They were already pre-processed by the source, and all data values are normalized, and they are uh, normalized here. Yeah. Uh, then uh, the and then I am finding the input. The inputs are the first twenty attributes, and the output is the label. Then I'm encoding the labels. Uh, the females were given the numeric value zero, and the males were given numeric value one. And it was done so that it's easy to process the data. Then I'm splitting the data into training set and test set. X train and X test and Y train and Y test or Y test. The test size of twenty percent and the training size training set uh, is equal to eighty percent of whole data. And I have also used a random state parameter to set an integer value so that every time the kernel restarts, the splitting is in the same random order as previous one. So yeah, you can see clearly that X train consists of two thousand five hundred thirty-four rows and X test consists of six thirty-four rows and the columns are twenty. Now I'm applying the classification models, and I'll uh, first give you a brief description about upon the models. The first one is decision tree models. It is one of the classification techniques used in data mining and machine learning, where decision trees are constructed, or I'll call it the approach that identifies ways to split a data set based on different conditions. So in decision trees, we are making a tree, and it's splitting among the attributes uh, given to it, and uh, the last node consists the decision, and the second last node consists the labels. Then I have uh, put up a so small screenshot of the implementation of decision tree. Then the second model I am talking about is random forest model. The random forest model, uh, the random forest combines hundreds or thousands of decision trees, trains each one on a slightly different set of observations, splitting nodes in each tree, considering a limit no limited number of features, and the final predictions of the random forest are made by averaging the predictions of each individual tree. So in random forest, what we are doing is, as we have twenty uh, different attributes, it's uh, Applying different set of attributes and forming different trees, and then it's averaging the predictions of each individual tree separately and predicting the result. So, random forest uh, is a collection of many decision trees. Then uh, I, the third model is support vector machine. SVM is a supervised machine learning algorithm which can be used for classification or regression problems. It uses a technique called the kernel trick to transform a data, and then based on these transformations, it finds an optimal boundary between the possible outputs. So basically, uh, in simple words, I would say that uh, in SVM, we have we are creating a barrier between the two classes. If you draw a graph using SVM, we can see a clear planes uh, between clear uh, two different planes consisting of the two classes we are defining. Then uh, the fourth model is naive based model. This model is based on Bayes' theorem, with an assumption of independence among predictors. In simple terms, a naive Bayes classifier assumes that the presence of a particular feature in a class is unrelated to the presence of any other feature. So, naive Bayes model clearly divides the data upon its features, and uh, it uh, it uh, vanishes all the relations between the classes, so that they are they are different and recognized by the model. Uh, now I am. Uh, Uh, showing you the various graphs and evaluation matrix. The first one is classification score bar chart. Over here, I have uh, compared the uh, algorithm score and the uh, and uh, of of different models, and uh, I've taken the algorithm name on the x-axis and uh, algorithm score on the y-axis. So you can see that random forest has the highest classification score, approximately ninety-eight percent. Then let's move on. Uh, then second number, the second one is classification report of all models. The classification report consists of precision recall, F1 score, and support. So basically, the support is uh, the uh, the division of data. Three one zero is the uh, are the females, and three twenty four are the males. And and by recall, I mean uh, recall. I'll I'll tell you the formula. The formula for recall is two positive upon uh, TP plus uh, FN. FN means false negatives. So basically, recall is the number of two positives. Upon a total number of positives, actual positives, and precision is TP upon TP plus FP. Precision is two positives upon uh, the sum of two positives and four positives. Then, uh, as you can see, I have compared all the classification reports of all the three, and uh, by F1 score, I mean the harmonic mean of precision and recall. So, as you can see, random forest has the highest precision, the highest recall, and the highest F1 score. 
among all the four uh, models used and uh, S3 one has the least as you can see clearly then uh, I have made pie charts for model predictions uh, and uh, as you can see that random forests uh, have predicted 98% of data as correct and 2% uh, of data is wrong so the general data has predicted is 98% correct and you can see all the other 4 as well all the other 3 as well and SVM again the least suited uh, model then the confusion matrix I have drawn for all the models and uh, see uh, these are the confusion matrix and uh, I have taken actual uh, actual ones on the y axis and predicted values on the x axis and uh, this is tree p this is this is f p this is uh, this is f uh, this is uh, uh, two negative and this is false positive and as you can see that random forest has the least number of uh, false negatives and as well as the false positives and uh, yeah so as you can see that uh, is the most is the is the best suited model over here and in svm the most number of false negatives and the most number of false positives so yeah it's uh, behaving really badly in this these type of problems svm and decision trees and naive base are moderate in these cases they are not that bad they can be used but the accuracy is not that good then I have plotted the ROC curve for all models. So the ROC curve is basically uh, the graph between two positive rate and the false positive rate. Uh, the false positive rate is on the X axis and the two positive rate is on the Y axis. And uh, so it signifies the area under curve. I'm sorry, the, the area under curve in this graph signifies uh, the, the importance of all the models that which one is the best suited. As you can see uh, in random forest ROC curve, the area under curve is 0.99, which which clearly means that it, it is behaving almost as ideal model for this problem. 0.99 is really good for this. And you can see decision tree AUC is 0.95 or SVM is 0.72, which is really bad. And naive base is 0.96. Naive base is quite good in these things. So yeah. Then uh, at last I have plotted the AUC line graph for, for comparison. Uh, so as you can see, uh, Starting with decision tree for 0.95, then it goes to 0.99, then for then SVM 0.72, and naive base again 0.96. So as you can see clearly, with AUC also random forest uh, is surpassing all of them. So the conclusion based on precision F1 score, recall values, prediction pie chart, accuracy score, confusion matrix, ROC curve, and AUC line graph, we can say that random forest classification is best suited for this problem where we are predicting the person as male or female based upon their voice signals support that the machine is least suitable based on same analysis so this was the end for my presentation and uh, here are the references uh, Kaggle, Voice Data Science and Stack Overflow these things have helped me uh, do this project and uh, yeah my presentation is over now I'll show you the implementation